Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today we're going to take a look at a software package called VAR AC. VAR AC recently sprung on to the market as a digital front end software package. It utilizes the VARA modem software packages as its transport layer. So, if you're currently running WinLink, you probably have both VARAs installed, the VARA and the VARA FM. You might even have the VARA satellite installed as well, and guess what? Uh, VAR AC supports that as well. Now, um, it has a lot of really neat features. File transfer, virtual mail, or VARA mail, which never touches the internet and is incapable of going on the internet. It has real-time keyboard-to-keyboard chat, the ability to call CQ and exchange data information. It can broadcast messages out onto a frequency as well as allow you to beacon and exchange ping information with other people out there on that frequency. I like this software. I think it's a little rough around the edges, um, but I wanted to get a review out and I wanted to get an instructional video out on how to get it installed and pretty much how to use it. Uh, I have a full review and of my opinion at the end of the video and I'd really appreciate it if you stuck around to watch that and commented on your opinion about the software after you get it set up and have played with it a little bit. All right. Uh, anyway, with that, uh, oh, well, while you're down there, you know, thinking about making a comment, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button for me. It really helps me out. And if you like this video, of course, click like. Uh, and you can even hit a notify icon if you're subscribed and you'll get notified when I come out with new material. So with that, hey, let's jump right into it. All right, well, I'm Stu, AG6AG. Let's get VAR AC installed on the PC, shall we? So let me go ahead and switch my view here a little bit. I am going to launch my browser, and I am going to type in the VAR AC homepage URL, which is V-A-R-A-C dash ham radio. Dot com. That'll take me directly to their website, and from here, I can go ahead and download VAR AC. Now, I need to make it clear, VAR AC is not VARA at all. VARA, VARA HF, VARA SAT, this is not, uh, not the same thing. This is a front end to the VARA modem that allows you to do all sorts of cool things with what the VARA modem is capable of doing. But it does not contain the VARA, VARA FM or VARA SAT software. You would have to install that separately. If you don't know how to do that, I'm going to try to put something up in the top here uh, for links on where I've shown that in other uh, video groups. Uh, mostly dealing with uh, WinLink. And uh, hey, since you're in there, you might check WinLink out for an install anyway, right? Anyway, with this, it talks about the prerequisites. I should have VARA HF version 4.7.2 or VARA FM version 4.2.7. Now, uh, if you're running VARA currently, there is no issue with updating. It's fairly straightforward. And i never had it fail after an update, so I would feel comfortable telling you, go ahead and update, but your mileage may vary. It says optional for OmniRig. Uh, it works with OmniRig, but only with the version 1 OmniRig. There's a version 1 and a version 2. They're done by two different groups. Uh, the version 1.2 is the current version of the version 1 software. Uh, that's what I use because it's compatible with all sorts of different software, uh, ham radio software packages. The VARA 2 group is only compatible with a couple, and unfortunately it's not compatible with the ones that I use. So I'm on VARA 1, or excuse me, uh, uh, OmniRig 1. Anyway, with that, 
let's continue on. Let's get this downloaded. Um, really, it wants my name, it wants my call sign, or it wants an email address. I really don't uh, uh, have a problem with that. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I've already done this with my real name and everything else, okay, with my call sign and all that. Uh, it will ask you to put this in every time you go here to download. So for updates, everything else, it'll still ask you to do it. I put my real address in here and not had a problem. I'm not getting any spam from them. I'm getting pretty much basic information. So I'm good with that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and type in a... Uh, email that I created just for the video and uh, there we go and we'll go ahead and download and it's just going to download it it's not going to go and verify I can see down in the corner here it's downloaded the latest version so it hasn't asked me to verify a link or anything else I'm just, you know uh, that makes me feel good now I clicked on this to open it and it's a zip file now the install on this is just like the install that you would do for sound modem or for uh, easy term. It doesn't have an installer. What it wants you to do is just to take this and extract it to your local drive. So that's what I'm going to do. I am just going to select uh, to extract it to my C colon uh, my C drive at the root at, to the var ac underscore v underscore six dot one three directory. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. When it's all done, there I am. Now, uh, what I need to do now is this var ac f file right there with the two little uh, uh, oh uh, text clouds in it. I'm just going to right hand mouse click that. And I am going to tell it to create a shortcut. So there's my shortcut. I'm going to drag the shortcut over to my desktop. It's just going to move it there. And I'm probably just going to rename it like so. Just a VARA AC. All right. You know, that's all it takes to get that set up. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to close all this. And I'm going to drag this over to uh, my other system or my other side, the real uh, side of my primary window. Well, okay, we're ready to get started on this. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the link that I made. And this is going to launch the initial VAR AC setup. Uh, so, all right tells me my call sign's missing, so let me get that info in. So I want to fill this page out first, put in my call sign. Now, they have what are called complex call signs here, and I think what you really need to do is read about them. For what I am going to use this for with HF, I don't need a complex call sign, but you may want to do that in order to track different things that are going on for your logging. Okay, uh, need to put in my QTH and uh, there I am, my name, my locator, and this is going to be the six digit version of the Maidenhead locator. Uh, my rig, I'm running FTDX3000 for my HF, uh, my power. I'm going to just say around 50 watts. My antenna is going to be an FTD. Oh, excuse me. No, my antenna is going to be a homegrown uh, dipole. And there we go. Now, what is it telling me? Well, yes, I've changed perimeters. It wants to restart. So it's going to restart the program. And hey, wow, it automatically found my VARA installation. Why? Because it was in the default directory for VARA. It says I have no uh, rig frequency definitions, anything like that. So I am going to go ahead and I need to configure that. So let's make this a little bit bigger so it's kind of workable here. 
right? And make it a little taller. And we're going to go here to settings and we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to go to rig control. Under rig control, we're going to make some modifications, right? So I want to tell it that I have a FT DX3000 and it's listed. So that's great. Now, I'm also going to say that my frequency controls the same radio. When I select it on the cat control, it found it uh, and placed it in the cat control for frequency control, right? So the push to talk now and the frequency control are the same. Um, additional changes. Well, my radio's not on COM5. No, it's on COM14. So I have to specify what COM port it's on. And I've got good videos on figuring that out. So uh, just uh, search my uh, videos. Uh, and I'm running 38.4 or 38,400 baud. Not everybody does that. The default, the, the default here is 4,800. Um, I use this because I use it with a lot of different programs, and this seems to work the best for me. Um, my uh, DTR and my RTS are both set to low. All right, so I could go in hours of explanation of all that, what all that means, but for now, we're just not going to worry about it. I happen to know that my rig control settings are set up for that. So I'm going to leave that in there, uh, and I'm going to do a test. Now, you're not going to get to see the result. I'm going to have to stare at my radio and hit push to talk to see if my radio keys. So it keyed, so I want to turn it off. It unkeyed. Great! We're there. I've got that configured. Couple things over here on frequency control. I'm probably going to want to set to read the frequency every two minutes or two seconds, and that way it's going to reset itself to the right frequency. If I change the frequency over on the radio, I'll be able to read it inside the program. Do I want it to set the frequency upon startup to the last frequency? And I'm going to say no, I don't. I don't want it to mess with that portion of the radio. I really, all I want to do is just to verify that I'm on the right frequency. I want to change the frequency when I change the frequency in the program, but I don't want it to automatically do anything, okay? That's just me. All that said, this whole section here is about done. Um, we're going to talk about Vara mail, we're going to talk about broadcast, we're going to talk about um, oh, uh, beaconing, all sorts of other stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into great detail, but for my personal preferences, I am going to turn off allow parking. You want to know what allow parking is? You want to know what relay notification is? There's question marks right here. Check it out. See what it means. Okay. For me, allow parkings means that I would accept third-party emails and to deliver them later. I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Uh, I really am not going to run this unattended. I'm always going to be in front of it. So, uh, again, why would I want to make this like a, 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 a mail server? It's not. And by the way, to be clear... This does not have an internet connection. This is not going to relay email or send email out to the internet like WinLink does. Two completely different concepts, okay? So this is more along the sides of stuff that you can do. Uh, if, if you could combine FL Digi and um, Packet and FT8, this would probably be what you come up with. So, And we'll talk about those features after we get through this configuration. All right. So I just need to verify that my ADEF file is going to be in the right location, and that's the directory that we uh, unzipped everything into. Uh, I'm not going to send a log to... Uh, anybody and uh, my sub mode in this particular case is going to be vara hf so i'm all set to go with that for psk reporter uh i can upload everything i hear i can send reports i'm just going to leave that alone for now 
Okay, I can self-report. I'll leave that alone as well. VARA modem configuration. Well, guess what? I am going to be using VARA HF, and these are the ports that I'm listening on. Bar a monitor path, and that is optional, and you would set this up to be a monitor. And this, read through this, because it tells you how to do it, okay? And you're going to need to basically take your Vara HF directory, of course it's C colon backslash Vara typically. You're going to take that directory, you're going to duplicate it, and name the directory something else. In my case, it's uh, uh, set to uh, uh Oh, I think it's set to Vara Mon. And you're going to put that there. And I think mine is on port 3250. I don't know. But if I copy it and I set the port and everything in there to a fresh new directory and I launch it, it is going to communicate with it and I'm going to be set to go. It's going to change all the configuration when it launches on my current VARA configuration. Everything should work. It's kind of neat. It's beyond the scope of what I want to go through now, but maybe in a future video we'll talk more about that. Here's your QSO configuration, file transfer, all this stuff, the DX. I, I would probably leave all this stuff to defaults until you read about it and figure out what it all is. So the real question, uh, oh, and one real important thing, though, there's a skip CQ slot selector. You want to make sure that's unchecked. And in just a minute, we're going to go over all these different fun things, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and say save. You know what? And I'm already starting to get beacons, and I'm already starting to get CQs over here. So, all right. Let's talk about this. Well, okay. So, let us start talking about some of the unique things that VAR AC actually brings to the table. Um, first off, Above all others, I actually believe that beaconing is a big deal. Uh, we do beaconing all the time with stuff like Whisper and other software. This allows us to do beaconing with VARA. Uh, and the software also allows us to do pings against beacons. Um, and again, um, you know, that is not a lot more than just a exchange, but it works really well. And it kind of gives you an idea if you do enough of these uh, beacons and then do back pings, the other people do back pings to your beacon, you begin to see what your propagation is over on PSK uh, maps, right? So I kind of like that. That, and you can set it up to beacon, and, hey, it'll leave you alone until you get somebody that wants to talk to you. And then it'll give you an audible notice and you can pop on and do a QSO or do a, uh, yeah, a QSO with them, right? I think that's pretty cool. You can also send broadcasts. So let's say that you're having trouble connecting to somebody. You can actually toss a broadcast out there just to say, hey, sorry, I'm not able to copy you or whatever. Also, you can send a broadcast out just in general talking about current conditions or what's going on. Broadcast could be a really big deal in MCOM. So that's something that we should think about too. Imagine being able to send a broadcast out to all of your uh, uh, MCOM people for Aries or uh, Races or whatever to give them a heads up of something that may be coming up or something that may be going on. So there's a that's a big win. Now, calling QSO or excuse me, calling CQ, that's a pretty big deal too, right? Uh, you can actually have a QSO and guess what? You're, it will automatically exchange all of your information in order to have enough to put in a log, but you also have the opportunity to chat, and it actually has canned messages, just like the, uh, you know, the macros that are inside FL Digi. Um, all these things are really cool. You can send V mail, which is kind of like Vara mail, 
which let's say that you want to you your friend or whatever isn't on you can send a v-mail and you can let it sit there and if that friend comes up and sends out a beacon it will ask the friend if he wants to download a pending message it'll ask you if you're sitting next to the machine if you want to send it and you can do that you can make that connection and do it okay these are cool features what about sending files? Well, there's no file size restriction. Although, I mean, let's be honest, if you're going to send a file on HF, uh, you probably want to make sure it's a pretty small file. Uh, you could separately negotiate a connection on VARA FM locally on two meters and say, let's go over to this frequency and I'll send you a big file. So there's lots of neat things that they're putting together here, and they all seem to work pretty well. The last thing we should probably touch on is slots. And I'm going to jump on and change my shot a little bit so we can talk about slots. All right, so let's talk about slots. So the easiest way for me to show you slots is uh, to go ahead and pretend I'm going to send a CQ. Maybe we'll even send a CQ. So if I go call CQ, this box is going to pop up. I'm going to turn the audio up a little bit on my radio so you can hear it. All right. Now, you have five slots that are under the calling frequency. You have five slots that are over the calling frequency. So uh, they say 1 and 11 is preferred. I can use the slot sniffer. I'm over on one. Let's see if anybody's over on one waiting for a call. So what this does is you need to kind of look up in the far corner. I've actually changed my frequency to this, to that slot. I don't hear any digital. So this, this doesn't look busy to me. I can also do the same thing with slot 11. I click on slot 11 and I can do the sniffer. Ah, hear that? I heard somebody on slot 11. All right. What if I go down here to slot? Let's go to slot 3. Let's see if anybody's down here. All right. I'm going to call CQ, and in the CQ, it's going to say, if you want to connect to me, connect to slot uh, 3. So here we go. I'm calling CQ. When I'm done calling CQ, if you watch this over here, it's going to QSY to that slot. Ah, I might have just got somebody. Looks like I do. All right. It's telling me that I have an incoming request, but we still don't know who it is. And all the information is going to be down in this window of the actual what's going on, which is kind of cool. We're still negotiating that connection. Now, if I had a monitor screen up, I could see a little bit more. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Ah, I'm connected to Victor Echo 7 November Hotel Whiskey. So I got somebody in Canada. Now, what's going to happen without me doing anything here? It's going to exchange all of our information. So I am basically now uh, responding back saying, hey, it's me. He should, he or she, should respond back with a uh, basically a signal report which there he is. He's responded back. I am an R minus zero five. Okay. Is my signal report. Now I should be responding back to him with a signal report to him. And that signal report is coming back, uh, as let's see, I'm sending an R 16, R minus 16. 
and it is actually confirming that he's getting it. There we go. So we got all that. Hi, Randall. Good to connect with you. And you know, this is this is free hand. Uh, this finds you well today. All right. So I've given me, I've sent my information to him. I have not received his yet. So what if he doesn't send me his information? What can I do then? Well, I can actually request it, but let's see. I'm sending my stuff right now. And what I'm actually sending is what I just texted, right? And this, this reminds me so much of IRC, it's, it's funny. Now, I can also, right here, I can ask for his info, but let's see what he's sending. All right, he's sending something. There we go. All right, he is sending me his data now. So this actually should... Fill in my log information here. There we go. He's in British Columbia, Canada, which is amazing. Right? He didn't stuff his name in there, but I can put it in here. Let's see, Randall. And uh, he's about to give it there. He gave me his location. All right. I have enough information now that I could actually make a log entry. Second contact. I'm his second contact. Wow. So that's how fresh and new this is. You know, it's I, you can tell I'm getting a little excited here because this is fun. And I'm saying goodbye. So, that's some of the neat stuff you can do. Now, he's typing. I'm going to miss his last, uh, his last statement here, which is fine. This thing's going to disconnect in a minute. But you can see the enjoyment in this. Um, or maybe not. This might not be your thing, but I'm sure having fun doing it. So I've disconnected, and what should happen here, is it should allow me to QSY back. So I'm going to QSY back to the main frequency. <sighs> this stuff is amazing, and I keep learning new stuff with it. Now, the FM side, obviously you don't need those slots. They're only 750 hertz away from each other. They're big enough that you're not interfering with the other side, but they're still, uh, they're not going to work in an FM environment. So you need to shut those off. So I'm going to really quickly, after this thing eventually beacons, because it's actually waiting for the frequency to open up for me to be able to beacon. And that's why it says next beacon soon. Well, it still hasn't beacon, so all right, let's send a broadcast. All right, and I'm going to send a broadcast to all. Actually, I'm going to send this broadcast to, uh, let's see, W6RH, who is our uh, um, district uh, emergency coordinator. I'm going to say, hi, Rob. And I'm just going to do a broadcast and close. Oh, it sent the beacon. Awesome! So there the beacon went. Now let's see if my broadcast goes. There we go. There my broadcast went. All right. So you can see how many different and cool things that you can do with this.
All right. Yes. Is it an enormous time waster? Well, maybe, maybe. But let's, let's do something further. I'm going to close this and let's take a look at VAR, uh, at VAR AC in FM mode. All right, so I'm hoping what you notice out there is I now have a VAR AC FM icon here. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can set up for FM and HF as two different things. I chose to set them up as completely different uh, instances, which means that I have completely different directories for them. Let's take a quick glance at that. I don't want to harp on it, but you can take any of these directories and duplicate them. So what you'll see is there is VAR, VAR AC, and here is VAR AC FM. And the only thing that I did was I duplicated the VAR AC directory, and then I launched it and changed the configuration to a point towards my VHF radio, which it actually really isn't doing. So it's, it's, it's kind of a strange thing. FM is a much different protocol. Um, obviously, there's certain things you don't want to do. Uh, doing a shift of signal is not where you want to be with this. You really don't. You don't necessarily want to have a connection go over 750 hertz because it doesn't do you any good. FM is not sideband. It captures that entire 22.5 kilohertz width. So you don't want to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and launch the VAR ACFM setup that I have. And it's going to automatically, it's programmed to automatically launch VAR FM. And it's going to grumble here because I have not set up rig control. So the first thing I need to do is I need to tell it that I'm going to be on 145.030. That's going to be the FM frequency, and it's telling me I have to change the rig to that. And yes, absolutely. My FM uh, transmitter is set to 145.030 right now. So that's all set and working. Some of the configuration settings that you have to look at here is under rig control, I actually am doing my push to talk through cat control. So I still have to configure push to talk, but I'm not going to let it change the frequency because we're doing this on channelized frequencies. These are frequencies that we've set channels on uh, locally in our area. So I don't want to confuse that. And of course, I also want to make sure that I'm connecting to, uh, you know, the VARA FM. And I have a specific VARA FM that I've copied over that I'm using for VAR AC. So uh, again, this is going to be something you're probably going to want to play with and you're probably going to want to play with it a lot. Real important though, see the pull down up here I have now set to VARA FM and it automatically puts a little check here to skip CQ slot selector because you don't want to change slots. So you need to turn that off. And also I turn off all the PSK reporter stuff because you're not on HF. Anyway, with all that said, if I want to now, I could actually just say send a beacon and it just transmitted a beacon on FM that I'm out here on two meters. So the only other thing, now that you understand how this changes or varies, you should be able to play with this. I mean, you can turn around and call CQ, which I'm doing right now. But one thing I did have to do to get the frequency to work properly on this, I had to go into that configuration. And that's one of the other reasons I have a completely separate configuration here for this uh, on my system. Go into VAR ACFM, and I had to edit the var ac underscore frequencies dot com list and I just tell it to open with notepad 
and I had to add all the VHF uh, two meter frequencies that we would use typically for communications within my regional area. But once I did that, I was able to do the pull down and everything else. And by turning the slots off, I'm going to sit here and listen directly and wait for that uh, connection from somebody else. Anyway, there was VAR AC running VARA FM. Uh, matter of fact, you just watched VAR AC in action. Um, my final words. VAR AC is fun. Uh, it works really well on HF. I think the exchanges are a little clunky. Uh, they certainly are, in my mind, slower than when I uh, use like PS, uh, uh, PSK31 or RIDI. Um, the keyboard interaction is clunky because uh, remember you have to type your entire message and, before you send it and then it has to be able to send across VARA in the HF mode um, and while that happens you're still waiting for them to type back so there is quite a bit of time between the exchanges where at least with uh, RIDI and uh, uh, PSK31 it's a even exchange uh, you can see the person typing which makes you know that he's there you're still connected um, secondly I think that uh, there's going to be some real issues with uh, uh, VAR AC and MCOM because the majority of MCOM use turns out to be on FM and the FM system doesn't really lean itself towards tacticals it will not allow you to use SSIDs because they hide them inside their so uh, the exchanges to make their software work. And there's no ability to use tacticals in any manner, shape, or form and also be able to identify with the actual call sign of the station. So um, there's a lot of stuff that really needs to get straightened up before we can do that. Anyway, I'm going to continue to play with it. Um, I'm hoping I get some information out of the developers regarding some of the MCOM issues that I'm seeing. Uh, it is fun, and I recommend you play with it. Uh, and maybe just the clunkiness that I feel is because I'm so used to using RIDI and PSK31 that I'm just not taking the time or utilizing the patience to operate in the way it's designed. It could be all me. Let me know down in the comments what you think after you get it set up. Anyway, with that, hey, thanks for joining me. I had a good time making this video, although it was one of my tougher ones. And uh, I have to tell you, it really is great being up here. So do me a favor, will you? Click on the subscribe button. And hey, any comments or questions in a video, again, make them down below in the video. Oh, and don't forget, click that notification icon. All right, enough sales. <laughs> this is Stu, AG6AG. Hope to hear you out there on the air. 73, everybody.